Raftel, the last island in the Grand Line. How come that only Roger and his crew were able to find Raftel and no one else for 8 centuries? I don't think this is just because the others did not have the information from the four road poneglyphs. If Raftel would be just like the other islands in the Grand Line, then for sure someone would have found it by now even by accident. We know that the ancient kingdom had advanced technology, and this is one of the reasons why I don't think that Raftel is like the other islands. But before I get to this, let's start looking at things from the beginning. The only way to get to Raftel is by obtaining the information from the four road poneglyphs. I don't think that the language that is used on the poneglyphs to write the information is the language that was spoken in the ancient kingdom for two reasons. Number one, everyone in One Piece world so far did speak the same language, and by this we can assume that in the One Piece world there is a universal language or a common speech. If the language that the poneglyphs were written was the language of the ancient kingdom, then the world government would be able to read the poneglyphs for sure. Because otherwise, it doesn't make sense not to know the language of your enemy. How can you go to war with someone and not know anything about them? So, now the question is, what language was used to write on the poneglyphs? None. I don't think they were written in any language. What the people of the ancient kingdom used was not a language, but a code. It could be that they had this code, or they did create a special code just to use for the poneglyphs. And this way the information on the poneglyphs about the location of Raftel or the whereabouts of the ancient weapons would not fall into the hands of the enemy or other bad people in the future. Armies, for example, they use codes to communicate with each other important things, and even if the enemy is able to obtain these communications, they are useless unless they can decipher the code. So, the poneglyphs are coded, but when it comes to the road poneglyphs, they are doubly coded. And that's why Robin did ask Nami for help in order to convert the information into a map or a sea chart. Inawarashi did explain to them that there are four road poneglyphs in total and each of them points to a certain location. Once all those locations are known, each point can then be marked on a map and at the point where they converge and intersect, the destination you seek will emerge. Is this all you need to do to get to Raftel? I don't think so. Things are a lot more complicated than it seems. I think the information we have now is only the basic stuff. And knowing Oda how much he pays attention to the little details, I think the journey to Raftel it will feel like a roller coaster ride. To use a small example, one of the four road poneglyphs is missing. Where do you search for a missing poneglyph? Inuarashi said that there are four throughout the world, so it could be that this one is not even in the Grand Line. Professor Clover also said something similar that the ancient kingdom did scatter the poneglyphs all over the world. If so, then the Straw Hats will have to leave the Grand Line in search for the missing road poneglyph. But let's just say that the Straw Hats did manage to get their hands on all of the four road poneglyphs, and they are heading to those four locations. Looking at the map that Oda gave us in chapter 818, you can see that the two of the four locations are on water. This could mean that these places are so small that cannot be seen on the map, or they are underwater islands or sky islands. I think when the Straw Hats will get to these locations, they will have to face different challenges in order to obtain the information. But not just that. I think in each of these locations they also have to obtain other stuff besides the information about the location of Raftel. Like something that is material, and without these objects that serve in a way as keys, they will not be able to enter into Raftel. Just to be clear, I'm not talking about actual keys. These things could be anything, and by obtaining them they prove that they are worthy to enter Raftel. Because by the fact that Raftel is hidden to the outsiders, it makes sense that there will be other barriers or obstacles that would prevent people from entering in Raftel. So, even if the information on how to get to Raftel would become public, people will not be able to enter it. I think there are other requirements to enter Raftel, like you need to have King's Hockey or to have the ability to hear the voice of all things, or something along those lines. Whitebeard said to Blackbeard that you are not the man that Roger is waiting for. 
We know that Roger told Whitebeard about Raftel and what the D means. So it could be that Whitebeard said that to Blackbeard because he knows that Blackbeard doesn't have these requirements to find and enter Raftel. While for Luffy, both Shanks and Rayleigh, they said that they see similarities between Roger and Luffy. With all this being said, that you need to have the information about the location of Raftel and these objects that serve in a way like keys, I think there is one other thing. You cannot enter in Raftel at any time you want. I think there is a specific time when you can enter the island. This would be part of the information that they will get that there is only a small window of time when they can enter in Raftel. For example, let's just say that during the year only once an entrance will appear to enter Raftel, and this entrance will be visible for a very short period of time. It could be something like this. In this month, on this day, during the sunlight, at 1 o'clock, you need to be in this exact spot, and only then you will be able to see this entrance. If you have not figured out by now why I said that Raftel is not like the other islands at the beginning of the video, then let me tell you. I think Raftel is invisible to the outside world, and that's why no one was able to find Raftel on their own for more than 8 centuries. Except for those who did follow the instructions that the people of Raftel came up with, and the only ones who did this are the Roger Pirates. If Raftel is like the other islands, then things do not make sense, because it's very hard to believe that no one was able to find Raftel for 8 centuries. I am sure that people would have found Raftel by now, even by accident. The area where Raftel, the last island in the Grand Line, is supposed to be, it's not big. You can search every inch of the area in a very short period of time. And an island is not a small thing that you can miss it and not see it if you are traveling nearby. But if Raftel is invisible to the outside world, then it does make sense why no one found it on their own. And that's why the Yonkos are after the road Poneglyphs because they know that this is the only way to get to Raftel. And now the question is, how come Raftel is invisible? I think this was achieved with advanced technology. Raftel was transported into a space that is still part of this planet, but it is in another dimension. So we are talking about a very small parallel world, and that's why no one was able to find Raftel because it's not part of the normal world. Many ships have passed through the place where Raftel is, at the end of the Grand Line. But because Raftel is in another dimension, they could not find it. And that's why Raftel is considered the island of legends. Anyway, I want to let you know that this video will have a part 2 that I will post soon. In this video, I talked about how to find and enter Raftel, and in the next one, I will talk about the people of Raftel. Who are they, and why they are hiding from the world, and about their plans for the future. Thanks for watching, like and share if you like this video, and subscribe for more One Piece videos.